everybody, it's episode 8. Last time out, we had a story of an old man in a cave. He was more ageless. That's the way I would describe him. Uh, he was in the cave, though, and he had the gift of, of foresight, prophecy, if you will. And to see how all that played out, you already watched it. I know you already watched it. <laughs> this one's called Uncle Simon. Who is Uncle Simon? Is he your uncle? Is he my uncle? It's a simple title. So I presume the episode's all going to be about him. But it's interesting that they use the word uncle. It means he must have at least one or two or more nieces and or nephews. Right? So... That's my professional analysis of the title. Let's <laughs> get into the actual episode. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm glad you moved that. What are you looking up at? Uncle Simon? Ooh. Do you want your hot chocolate upstairs? Is that Uncle Simon? Uncle Simon, do you hear me? Do you want your hot chocolate upstairs? Garbage head. <laughs> Right behind you, there's no need to yell. <laughs> What's why, on your mind? Why do people do that? Sometime try extending yourself, Uncle, just sufficiently to let me know where you are. If I'm not upstairs in my bedroom or in the study, then I'm downstairs in my laboratory. Ooh, laboratory? What are you building? You ever dance, Barbara? I'm very busy, Uncle Simon. You ever cut loose? Oh, most unlikely, most unlikely. <laughs> you know, you're the only woman I know. Who looks as if underneath her clothes she wore clothes. <laughs> With all the grace and femininity of a high button shoe. Hey, she's taking care of you. And you, Uncle Simon. Go on. Let's see if you can compensate for the fact that you're a passionless vegetable. If I'm a passionless vegetable, it's because my gardener is an ancient relic. Wow. <laughs> not bad, not bad, not bad. Well, my angular turnip, <laughs> what else is new with you? I cleaned up after you. I tried to clear away some of the debris you always leave behind. What kind of debris? And what is this contraption? A room straightener, perhaps? A little robot. You've been told a thousand times not to disturb things. Don't touch my stuff. I could have put it away when I swept out the cellar. Your laboratory door was securely bolted. Someday I would like to find out what it is you putter around Secrets. with. Secrets. <laughs> Someday you will be owner of this decaying barn. Then you can do as you please. But until then, keep your spindle shank carcass out of my laboratory. <laughs> now go and get me some hot chocolate. And use the English bone china cup. Not hot enough, I'll throw it on the floor. He's pretty demanding. Barbara, why do you stay here? Yeah, why do you put up with me? You would like me to be quite honest, I presume? Indeed. You may be a bit short on beauty. <laughs> the lack of candor has never been one of your deficiencies. <laughs> why, dude? I live for the moment when I can see you buried. When I come back from your funeral, I'm going to open a bottle of wine. Ooh, she got a party. Like it's 1999. For 25 years. 25 years? Of being years. shrieked at, humiliated, and stepped on like an old rug. Is that sufficiently honest for you? <laughs> when I'm asked, I offer you this observation. Mm -hmm. If you had an ounce of gristle, you would have murdered me years ago. Yeah. He maybe he's building a clone of himself down there. 25 more years. I'm going to get me some chocolate. I love her reason for staying is to see him die. Oh, she's sneaking down. He'll berate you. He's there. Hello. Well, what have we here? But perhaps you might show me what you were building. Yeah, show me. Indeed. That's the only character trait you share with normal women. Curiosity. Curiosity. Well, one day you'll know what I'm building. Until then, you night-crawling imitation of the female <laughs> gender. Go on upstairs and engage yourself in a nerve-wracking game of dominoes. Oh, I'll domino you down the stairs. Why do Beasts like you stay alive so long. Because in most cases, mine in particular, we have something to live for. Because I know how deeply dedicated you are to seeing me die. Oh, it's a battle of wits. 
who came here and nursed you and kept you alive. You did. Was it out of love, Barbara? I'll tell you why you came. Go, oh, the money. Everything you did for me, you did for greed. Greed. But before that payoff, you pay through every pore in your body. Pay you on behalf of you. Jeez. You. He's dead. He's like Alfred Hitchcock. She's like somebody in his movies. Barbara, help me. Oh, not this time. I want to see what's in your lab. Why don't you help me, Bob? 25 years of abuse. What's that, Uncle? I didn't quite hear you. I think my back is broken. Oh, he can't move. You say you want some hot chocolate? Do you want it in the English bone china cup? Uncle Simon? Uncle Simon? You'll miss him when he's gone. Don't die quite this moment. I want to tell you something. Who? Oh. I am no longer sewing, Uncle Simon. As of right now, I am going to rape! <laughs> 25 years. She deserved her moment. Well, she didn't go into the lab. I want to see what's in the lab. Is it a giant Roomba? Is it a copy of himself? Oh, oh. she's like Mickey Rooney. She's finally big. Hey world, I'm back! <laughs> I want to see what's in this lab. <laughs> the will very explicitly requires that you throw away nothing. I see. I see. The house, its furnishings. How much money do I get? Goes to you. The proviso is, of course, that you remain here. We gotta so stay I here? But, uh, is this legal? The document is quite clear in its intent. And the cash which is quite sizable, so long as you remain in the house. Is it to qualify for all the other legacies, there is one additional stipulation, that you're to care for all of your uncle's experiments. Care for them? I don't understand, Mr. Schwimmer. What do you mean? She will care for it, look after it, and see to its wants and needs. The robot. In the event my beloved niece Just get out of there. fails to comply with the provisions, I hereby give and bequeath all my property to the state university. University? Uh, Whatever it is, it must be in the laboratory. Let's have a look at it. It could be just a copy of him forever haunting her. In robot form? Oh, it must be in here. Oh, oh it's a robot! I'm a mechanical man. Be patient with me. Hello, Barbara. Hello. Um, lawyer, this is crazy. Can we just, uh... I, my uncle was clearly crazy. I'm going to sell the house and take all the assets. And I'm definitely plugging out the robot. Barbara. He's like um, the one in Forbidden Planet. Isn't he? Except for the head. The head is, the head is like just someone put a bucket on it <laughs> and put like eyes in. <laughs> I'm going out, Frankenstein. Frankenstein. If you need anything, like a can of lubricant, get it yourself. Soon I will have all my faculties. I will be able to perform all my functions. What, what are your functions? How perfectly grand. How exciting. It's coming through now. What's... What is? What's coming? A, a craving. Hot chocolate. Ooh. I would love a cup he of He loves hot, hot chocolate. chocolate. Well, that's not going to do your circuits any good. Do you want some lubricant with that hot chocolate? He made himself into a robot. Get out of there. Take all the, the, the expensive stuff and go. Miss Paul? You look lovely, Miss Paul. Oh, yeah, she does. And how is... How is young Master Paul? Mm hmm? Oh, he broke down, you know? I don't know anything. I'm not a scientist. He just he just broke down in his sleep. I threw some water on him. Maybe she'll fall down the stairs and the robot will have to take care of her. She'll never get out of here. Ah, uh, hello. You took those keys off the desk. Give them back to me. I must keep the laboratory door locked. You is my room. It belongs to me. Ooh, okay. Won't you bring me some hot chocolate? You get it yourself. What is the matter? Barbara, Ooh. tell me, please, what is the matter, you peanut-headed sample of nature's <laughs> carelessness? <laughs> He's back. He's back. 
You're gonna have a harder trouble killing him. Take that, you tin can. Help me. No chance. Finish the job, Barbara. How are you this evening, Miss Polk? Oh, she's back into her. It doesn't seem to say much. He makes his wants known. Pity about his, his leg. But he manages to get around, doesn't he? Indeed he does. Is he a robot king? Well, take care of yourself, my dear. No need to show me out. When are you gonna die, dude? <laughs> he does. He has king. <laughs> Barbara! Oh, I'm here for my round of insults. Come on, Barbara. You don't need this shit. Speak up, you lint-headed clod. <laughs> I couldn't hear you. I'll make some hot chocolate. I'll make some. You. What does it take to make you move, you bovine crab? Push him again. Fix it for you now. Come on, Barbara. Snap out of it. I'm the Lady Barbara, who's discovered belatedly that all bad things don't come to an end. Tonight's uncomfortable little exercise in avarice and automatons from the Twilight Zone. Oh, another another happy ending. Uncle Simon gets to live forever and ever. And his loving niece, if they're related at all, his loving niece is going to take care of him. You know, until she dies. No life for her. Because, you know, she's too busy making hot chocolate and closing all the drapes. Yeah, good happy ending. That was Uncle Simon. Uncle Simon was a man, a distinguished man, a man of great taste and verbosity. You know? He swallowed a dictionary for lunch and he's just throwing it all out at Barbara throughout the day and, you know, he... All he wants to do is work on his little experiments in his lab. I wonder if the robot... <laughs> the robot's making another robot. You know? Just in case. A man so full of... what? How did Rod describe it? A gleeful hate? Something like that. He put, he put two words together that are opposites. and You know, he really relishes the... Um, the nastiness of his own character. He just wants to put Barbara through hell. See, Barbara came to take care of him when he was injured, but he could see in her eye that she was just there in case he died. So then he'd leave everything to her. He saw her as, you know, a gold digger, in a way. Not the prospecting kind, but the, ooh, a, an old relative of mine is about to die. Well, I'm here, I'm here, I'm going to take care of you. Is he dead yet? So we thought, ooh, I'm going to show her. Not only am I going to live for the next 25 years, but I'm going to build a robot that's going to live forever. <laughs> I'm going to put it into the will. She don't get a penny. Unless she stays here and takes care of the robot. Just like she takes care of me. And you can see with the, her clothes. You know, she thought she was free. She was trying to be free. But eventually she was resigned to her fate. Barbara, have some self-respect to get the hell out of there. Maybe you don't have options. Maybe you don't have any other family. I don't know. I don't know what to say. Become some. Become a scientist. Find out how the robot works. Change its programming. Get another set of keys for the lab. Find a way to depower the damn thing. Although... That guy comes every week to make sure the robots still run. He's that's good. That's a scam. That's a scam. Uncle Simon left something, a little bit of money in the the will for the that guy, for sure. Anyway, <laughs> the next episode is called Probe Seven Over and Out. Base episode, right? Unless the probe is like, you know, we sent it to Vancouver or something. So I'm looking forward to that next time. So, yeah, the moral of the story is if you have an aging relative and they're going to leave you a load of money, 
Just kill them. <laughs> Throw them down the stairs. <laughs> Gloat over their bodies. That was dark, Barbara. Very dark. You know? <laughs> what an episode. What an episode. Um, I'll see you next time. <laughs>